thrilled to bring uh, with me tonight Mr. Lincoln Brown, who has been involved with the uh, Lakefield Fair for how many years, Lincoln? 60. He's 60 years. That's a major commitment. And uh, we're really, really pleased and we're honored to have him here to tell some stories about the uh, the Lakefield Fair in the old days and, and uh, what happened and some of the changes that happened over all those years. I'm just going to give just a really short overview of the, the history of the fair um, from the book by was Bob Deladon's research. In early 1855, what was to become the Lakefield Agricultural Society was formed. It was found that buying seed and other necessary farming materials was cheaper in bulk and available to such societies. Competitions for livestock, produce, and handwork were hotly contested. The fall fair was held in various locations until 1878, when it came to Lakefield to stay. The first fairgrounds was purchased in 1888 in the present area approximately of where Dixie Lee is right now and eventually had a bandstand, a rink, and a racetrack. In 1906, the society moved and purchased its present location, which is approximately 11 acres on Williams Street. Uh, that was um, the, early, the early history that appears in, in the Historical Society book. The fair date was changed to summer in 1981 due to consistently miserable weather in the fall. At least that's my recollection. I remember sitting on my horse being drenched year after year. <laughs> I think it may have another, another take on that. <laughs> At one time, it spanned four days when it was held on holiday weekends. This year, it will be July 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. The property presently contains a grandstand, a judge's tower, food building, which we call the tea room, with several attached buildings, a cattle barn, a poultry barn, storage barn, horse show ring, and old, older horse stalls. The property is entirely owned by the Lakefield Agricultural Society. Uh, Lincoln Brown was elected to executive positions for approximately 15 years, the record show. Uh, and you were president for three years? Yeah, three years. Uh, we, we show since about 1984, you started with, with the executive? Yes. Okay. Now we'll just get you to hold your mic up so it'll go through the sound system. Okay. <laughs> what was the first year that you remember going to the fair? <coughs> 1934. 1934. Oh, yeah. well, what do you remember about it? Well, there was no buildings on it, and all the horses and that was just tied to the fence. Same with the cattle. Horses and, and cattle all tied along the fences. Was there a, a track for racing yes. at that time? Yes, there was. There was a race track there. Now, where would um, things like poultry and, and smaller animals and goats be shown? The poultry was underneath the grandstand. Oh, I've been under there. It's not very big. It's not very big. That's a, there's a light in there. Uh, well, just a few years ago, we took uh, seven loads of uh, papers and that, magazines and that, out of underneath the grandstand and took them to the dump. I bet it was piled pretty high in there. The kids used to throw them in the back of the grandstand there oh. at the boards taken off. Now, how, how many uh, chickens would you be able to get into a show in there? Not very many. <laughs> <laughs> now, Lincoln's specialty is poultry. Uh, pardon me. The judge had to take every bird out from underneath the grandstand to check it over. Oh, yeah. that would have taken all day. And then it took a long day. It started at 10 o'clock and then it was four in the afternoon oh. and it was finished. Oh, we got paid well. 
I imagine you took some prizes in that competition. Yes, I took a few. Lincoln's specialty is breeding top quality poultry birds, and he still does. He still has poultry. Yes. That's something you've always not too, not too many, but I would still have a few. When, when did some buildings start appearing on the grounds? No, no idea of that. I'm saying for sure. For the grandstand, when did that have come in? Well, the building was, uh, uh, it was recently. Yeah, in the 80s? Yeah, in the 80s, 84, I think it was. And the, uh, the tea room was a special project. Yes, that was a, another project, and then the, the other big barn put up. Mm -hmm. And the judge's tower, now well, that's kind of an interesting structure, two stories, yeah. and it's uh, it's all glass on top, so you can see all over all the All the grounds. But, but that's been moved a couple of times, and yes. it's still standing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, was, was your family involved in showing the fair? How did you get started in, in going? Yeah, my uncle was showing poultry at that time, and uh, my other uncle was showing the cattle. Oh, he showed cattle? Yeah. And, and you lived in the, in the area in Smith at that time? Yes, on uh, Mountain Street, across from the uh, uh, old hospital. How would how would the animals have been transported to the fair in the old days? Well, we, my uncle had a dump truck, and we, and we had to build a rack to bring my two cows up to make the old fair. Oh, it must have been quite adventure with the cows. <laughs> I had a uh, uh, dairy uh, calf and a uh, beef uh, calf. And we showed them at the field fair. And that's all we had to transport them was the gravel truck. Probably better than some. I imagine some people would have had to drive their cattle. Oh, yes. Town. Yes. Was that uh, something you uh, see coming down the street? The McConkeys from the 10th plane, they drove, drove their cattle down to the fair. That's a long way. That's a long way to drive. How many would come that way? Uh, we had about 12, I guess. And, uh, Did you have um, uh, other animals of interest in, in oh, showing yeah. at the fair? Oh yeah, there was horses. And horses too? Heavy horses and light horses. Do you remember much about the racing? Yeah, it was uh, uh, not too... Uh, Profitable. Well. <laughs> so, Not too many they, they, they prices. They equipped that. <laughs> <laughs> it was profitable for the drivers, was it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so one, one thing I remember about Big Bill Fair was uh, there was two fellas, uh, was old, uh, um, I am was Mayor. Peace constable. He was on the uh, on the gates. It was Harry Franks and, and uh, young White, and they were coming in with liquor, and he took it from them, and then they were over in the other building and drank it themselves. I can remember that. He <laughs> must have quite a few memorable experiences. Uh, about the fair, what, what would be probably the, the most unusual thing you can remember? It's a lot of years. There's lots, if you could just think of them at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Were there ever a, a, an unusual accident? Yeah, there was a couple of accidents at the fair. Some cattle got away and and uh, then there was uh, a horse that flung into a truck 
Oh. And there must have been some pretty funny things happening oh, yeah. over the years. Just be moving them all. So the horse racing that only went till the, the, about the 50s so or so, yes. and they decided to drop that. Well, then, then they went to the track of Peter. Right. Mm -hmm. There were some stories that there used to be some horse racing right on the main street in Lakefield. Oh yes, I can't remember that, but uh, there was races down there. And some of the track is still visible on the fairgrounds. Oh, yes. It's always maintained in front of the grandstand, and you can, from an aerial picture, you can probably see the outline of the old track. Um, uh, and the grandstand would have come in probably before the 50s then, so that it would be in the finish line, I guess, of, yes. the, of the horse racing. It must have been quite, quite a uh, an adventure with guys trying to beat each other out every year. Yes, that grandstand should be torn down right now. <laughs> it's still hanging in there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now, were you around during the, the 100th anniversary of the fair? It would have been 1955? Oh, yes. Yes, I was here. Did they have anything special? going on at that time for a... Uh, they had horse races. They had the horse races. That was a special thing. Maybe we should revive that. <laughs> that was the main thing. Or special dances or... Oh yeah, there was a dance after on, on the Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And I guess a lot of local people for that. Oh yes. Was there, was there normally a dance with the fair over the years? Was there a dance every year? At one time there was. Mm -hmm. At one time there was a dance every Saturday night at the fair. Every, oh, every year. Yeah. And bring in the local fiddlers? Oh, well, yes. It was uh, put in a, a little band to violins and drums and that. So it's a pretty good time. Yeah. Pretty yeah, good. very good time. <laughs> Some buildings were moved over the years. I remember when the old horse stalls used to be at the front of the fairgrounds. Yes, yes. Right around the front gates there. They were moved back. And they're still there, but at the back of the fairgrounds. Yeah. They, uh, they, they were put in two sections and they face each other now instead of one big long line. It was hard getting to the show ring, I remember, the old way. Oh, and people with baby strokes wanted to cross in front of the horses. <laughs> oh, what sort of major changes have you seen in the fair of, from 1934? That's a long, a long time. Oh, well, there's all the new uh, breeds of cattle and things like that that we didn't have back then. New people? Yeah, we're getting more people in here now than we did before. And it was a, it was a fall fair from the beginning. Yes, fall fair. Did it always rain? Mostly. <laughs> that's, that's why it was changed. And at one time, um, I remember when it was on civic holiday weekend, we made it yeah. Uh, extra days. Didn't like that because I couldn't go to the cottage. <laughs> <laughs> that takes it. It's hard to get volunteers on a holiday weekend, and it was pretty tiring uh, for the directors to work four days. So it's yeah. it, it was nicer having to switch to three days. And then there was uh, at the beginning you now in 1934. How many days? With the fair up there. It was only three days. Three days at that time. That's pretty good for that <clears> early. <throat> Did you have, um, were the, the livestock exhibits separated? Horses one day, cattle one day? Yes, at one time like that. And 
and uh, they decided that they'd have to stay for the during the fair. Now, what about um, uh, handcrafts and home craft work that the ladies would have entered their? Well, there's lots of that, and I didn't have too much to do with that. Nice to have it after. Though. <laughs> It's a pretty nice college. Yeah. <laughs> but when I get directors to do the work. It's a lot of work involved. Yeah. What are some of the, the most important things that, that you worked on? Okay. What's what are some of the things that you worked on as a director and as a president? Well, different things, I don't know. I, I remember you uh, uh, putting in fences, painting, oh, yeah. cutting, cutting lawns, yeah. keeping the barns clean. Yeah, all that had to be done. It's hard to get. Most of the directors were farmers and they had their own work to do. Mm -hmm. so when, when you became a, a, a director, had you been a volunteer before that? Oh yes, a number of years before that. And who roped you into and then they, becoming a director? Beg your pardon? Who roped you into becoming a director? Oh, I forget now. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could think of his name now. Then <laughs> I became president and that took up a lot of time too. And you had someone to, to help you. Your wife Lillian was involved as well. Oh yes, both worked here for for years. There. There is actually the, the poultry barn on the fairgrounds. is dedicated to Lincoln and his wife Lillian, and their name is uh, is on the barn, and it's their it's their barn because they helped with the fair for so many years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you both showed poultry. Hey, what? You both showed in poultry. Yeah, yeah, still show. Did she meet you? Sometimes. <laughs> and sometimes you had uh, extra shows on the fairgrounds, extra poultry shows. Oh yes, we had the club shows mm -hmm. a lot of the times. And how many? How and many? After we got that barn built, the one that. It was uh, really a pleasure to show in there instead of underneath the grandstand. <laughs> I can believe that. <laughs> That's a beautiful part. <laughs> How? When? When was that? How long did you have to show under the grandstand? We built built that barn. Oh, that long. Yeah. Oh, that's a long time. Yeah. That's a long time. Poor judge. Yeah. <laughs> But your poultry number has really increased? I mean, it's, it has in the last few years. How many birds? I don't know how many we have. I think we have just under 500. 500 birds, yes, that's a lot. There's been some changes with uh, government funding with the fairs. How did that change the fair? Well, the prices before and then they weren't very good. And the price money was some couple of dollars, I think it was. And then the, then the government money it helped that? The government put in some, and then that was cut off too. Now we no longer have government funding, or very little anyway. Mm -hmm. That's changed it a lot. And we have, uh, you, you were involved with some other fairs as well? Yes, I um, was. Nine. Nine other fairs as a director? Yeah. Nine, nine so ten fairs? Yeah, on Norwood Fair Board and Melbrook. And uh, I can't name them all in the middle. Uh, or no? Or no. Still remember that. Oh, good. Peterborough? 
Peter Byrne. Are they different? I think I was the factor in nine, nine different categories. That's so you know your stuff. <laughs> you know what you're talking about with bears. <laughs> what are some of the changes you've seen over the years uh, in, the, in the fair system? Has there been a lot of changes? Oh yeah, there's been a lot of changes to uh, different, uh, different things in the programs now. Let me in the moral now. There's some uh, opportunity to to go down to the convention in Toronto, and uh, it's the Ontario Society, Ontario Association of Agricultural Societies, mm -hmm. and they have a convention every year in Toronto. And uh, if you're able, if directors go to that, you had two number of those. We have. Uh, we had more. In a book at home, it says that we attended 20 of them. 20 conventions. Conventions in China. And where do they usually have them? Where, where are the conventions? They were in, uh, I don't know where they were now. One of the big hotels? In Royal York. Oh, Royal York? Yeah. yeah. I've been to, yeah, I went to two or three. And it was very nice. They have, um, Round table discussions. Yes. Yeah. And you get to uh, meet people from other fairs, Fairs. find out what they're doing, pick their brains, <laughs> steal their ideas. See what we can dig up, anyways. Yes. And you brought lots of information home oh, for those. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's a good thing to go to because you can learn what these other fairs are doing. And to be able to see old friends every year. Yes. <laughs> now, there's been uh, uh, some new buildings put on the fairgrounds with the barns that are there. Um, how's the fundraising done for that? Or was it just through income that the fair brought in? Just for the main income. Uh, through gate receipts yeah. and things like that? Yeah, and that's why they got the money for that. Mm -hmm. And if we have now, um, over the years, had demolition derby. Yes. And yes. That draws the crowd. Definitely. The crowd loves that. When did the midway first start to come? We almost had a little midway. Big wheel. Little Ferris wheel or yeah. carousel, something like that? We almost had that. And Conference got in there and they're a big outfit now. Oh, that's for sure. They're very big. Would you would you take um, family, kids, nieces, nephews to the fair? Oh, yeah. The Francis wasn't very big at that time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember being in the parade when I was a little kid. Years ago, back twirling my tongs. <laughs> but there used to be a parade in the, um, that would have been in the early 70s, I guess. Was there usually a parade? Yes, there was a, a parade, a parade down the main street. It wasn't a very big parade, but we always had a parade in the middle. I remember. Um, some of the businesses would put things in, and it just seemed to uh, let everyone know this was the weekend the fair was on. <coughs> yeah. We've had uh, a number of different um, hiring judges to, to come in. Uh, where do you find judges for the different uh, categories, all the different livestock? There's a book out with the, the judges mm -hmm. and uh, what they are if they're fruit and vegetables and that. There's a book out put out by the Agriculture Society. 
and you can choose who you want to yeah. that way. Yeah. Now, of course, a lot of work goes on behind the scenes before the fair. That's right. What are some of the you know, lots of things? Work. <laughs> yes, lots of work. I remember seeing you working pretty hard before the fair and after the fair. Yeah. But all year round, really, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. You have to start right after the fair to look for it for the next year's. Mm -hmm. Clean up day. Yeah. It's always a That's hard to get to keep up to do. <laughs> and then after that, then the meetings start pretty much yeah. right away. Yeah, right away. And plan for next year. And do you still come to Lakefield Fair? Yeah. And you still bring your, your poultry? I think so. Still yeah. winning too, I bet. <laughs> Let's see how it works out this year. Mm -hmm. What what type of birds you're breeding? Well, mostly the phantoms now. Phantom hens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I work four different groups, varieties. Mm -hmm. And you're located up in Smith Township now. Yes. And you can you have well, been there for a number of years now. Mm -hmm. And the at at the beginning, way back in 1934, what brought you to the fair at that time? Did you come with family? Oh yes, my uncle always showed poetry, so I came with him and that's how I got started in. And, and when you started to show cattle or calves? And, yeah, I showed uh, beef cattle, uh, beef calf, and uh, dairy calf. Uh, how, how long would it take to get the cows ready? I got ready? two, the first on each one, and I got champion and showmanship. Wow. <laughs> and how old would you have been then? I'm about 17. 17, and you won all that. Yeah. Did you spend all your prize winning at the fair? No, I spent it in Eaton's and bought a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> And that's one of the fun things with the fair is winning prize money. It's uh, to be able, even if it's a little something, you put your effort into it, and, yeah. you know, a little bit of spending money. Oh, yes. How long did it take to get your calves ready? Well, I started on there about uh, six weeks old. And train them. And I, uh, at that time, I was living with my grandparents on the farm of Langton Street. And uh, I raised these two calves, a beef calf and a uh, dairy calf that I got from Archie Bulmer. Mm -hmm. And I uh, just used to turn them loose on the cows. And, and, uh, my grandfather was wondering why these cows weren't given too much milk. <laughs> <laughs> but I was fattening up the calves. Yeah, now we know why you won all those prizes. <laughs> Did he figure that out? <laughs> After the fair, that the milk was better? <laughs> no. <laughs> now, how did you get them on the dump truck? Well, I had to go to the, the box, like a, a box there, and, and put in the dump truck. And it it uh, only could put about six calves in there, I guess. Six calves. And would your uncle bring some as well? No, no, he was just my chauffeur. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How did you convince those cows to get into those boxes? It was a problem at times. <laughs> and you'd have to do it twice. Take them to the fair and then unload them. Yeah. I guess they weren't too happy about going back on no. there. <laughs> and then pick them up later on. And then you would unload them and just take the place on the fence? Yeah. And, and tie them to the fence? And you would bring each one out for the judge. Yeah. And yeah. he had the separate divisions. 
dairy is cattle would be separate. Yeah. So you showed them a lot. It was weekends. Oh yeah. Weekends were all taken up. Mm -hmm. And you, how, you took them to other fairs as well? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the fairgrounds at that time with no building on it um, and probably not too many houses around there either. Mm -hmm. um, would there have been any, any there must have been some houses in the early 30s oh, around the fairgrounds, but nothing too close. Oh, not, not too close. Mostly farmland surrounding it. And then over the years, and then the horses got away and then out onto the farmland. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> I remember seeing a probably a yearling uh, here at least one time. Yeah. He ran to the back of the fairground. He was not coming home. <laughs> he was not going to be caught. It would be a few runs. <laughs> I remember being chased on my own horse once. <laughs> he didn't see cows too often, that horse. <laughs> he thought it was funny. But we always had um, heavy horses and harness horses. Harness, harness horses. Were there a lot, horses. a lot of uh, different kinds of harness horses? Oh, no, yeah, they, they had uh, lots of uh, light horses. Mm -hmm. For riding and, yeah, yeah. and for uh, and for driving, yeah. hackneys and hackneys, mostly roadsters. Would have been pretty stiff competition for for the driving horses. Oh yeah. Yes. So you've seen over the years uh, the fairs grown in numbers of entries. Oh yes. And. Uh, Last few years, there's been a lot of new entries. Mm -hmm. New people. Mm -hmm. A lot more people. That, that was years, a few years ago. Anyway. Now the fairs in the in, in the older days, there wasn't as much um, entertainment in those days as as there is now. What sort of uh, a place in in the family or in the time of year? How much importance was there in going to the local fairs? Well, you could meet all the neighbors there. Uh-huh, yeah. See everybody catch up on all the gossip? Yeah. <laughs> that was the main thing. And there was a way to interact and buy and sell? Oh, yeah. Sell so, them. Um, uh, People used to go to the fair just to sell their products or their horses and, and things like that years ago. So it was a way if you had a cow for sale uh, or you were looking for an mm -hmm. animal, there they were all in one place. Mm -hmm. And at the fair, the farmer would sell it. Mm -hmm. They, did anyone, anyone ever complain about the judge? Oh, the odd one. Yeah. I always get that, even to me. Yep. It's <laughs> always someone who wants a better placing. <laughs> now, has the, the way the fair is, is run, has that changed over the years? Oh, not that much, I don't think. Pretty similar to what That's it used to be? Was, yeah. yeah few years ago. The main concern, still money back in those days. Yeah. Raising enough money to run the fair. It's, it's like running a three a three ring circus. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. All the time, every day, three rings going all the time. Yeah. And did, did, did you meet a lot of new people? Did you make new friendships? Oh yes, you meet a lot of new people. Even today, you meet a lot of new people at the fair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, does anyone have any questions for me about what the fair was like? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Do you remember when the demolition derby started? The stock car racers. Yeah. <laughs> Special things happening this year. Uh, 
And that's a very interesting trivia. Oh, that's very interesting. You should have a copy of that. Yeah. It's the format at the fair. For the oh, yes. yes. It's very, very interesting. Call the CBC. They probably got it. Uh, yeah. Anyone else have had some interesting experiences? I know there's a lot of faces in the audience here that are uh, familiar with the fair. Oh no, quiet. <laughs> well, when it first started, 1855, if you can imagine the difference as to what it what it is nowadays. It's uh, started out as a, a place to get grain, seeds, and it, it grew. And it the old books in the old treasurer's books. It was paid in pounds sterling in uh, in original. They would list who won what. And there's listings in the old books for uh, Catherine Partrail and Susanna Moody, were both quite active in uh, entering things in the fair. Where were those books kept? I believe our secretary has them. For a girl, Lame, she has them. She has what's left. We have some of the original books from the 1850s. But of course, over 150 years, some of them get damaged. Fires. Yeah, floods. Should, should they be in an archive somewhere? I don't know if it's been addressed yet. It's a possibility. It's a possibility. Definitely. Yes. Um, we have to thank um, Alice, I, I imagine, and Dawn, Bob, because uh, it was uh, under their supervision or adventure that the Lakefield Antique Show was begun. They asked the right. horticulture to join them. We did the food the first year, and then they carried it on, I think, for two years, and then it was a lot of work right at fair time. So then we have carried it on, and that is the horticulture main fundraiser. That's a main fundraiser for you, yes. All the hanging baskets and plants come mm -hmm. because then, so we have Alice to thank for that. There's a connection. And that was a fundraiser for the fair. A community connection. Yeah. And that's something that's <clears throat> a very important about a local fair is the community connection. Yeah. You have to draw people. Lakefield itself does not love farms anymore, does it? Right. Not too many farms right in Lakefield yeah. anymore. Would there have been uh, working farms uh, in the early days right in Lakefield? Oh, yes. And they would bring their produce and livestock. But eventually the town became pretty uh, built up. So a lot of it comes from the surrounding area. Uh, but that's that's the food that goes on your table right there. And the purpose of the fairs is to increase the quality. And that's something that's so important. It's like a sort of an English tradition brought over oh, from yeah. old England. To uh, to compete with animals and uh, and lives, livestock and produce and handicraft. There's something for everyone. There's something for children. That's how I got started in the fair. Was to, I entered the drawings and paintings and things like that. Mm -hmm. and they got a horse, so then there was in with the horses, showing the horses. I see Don and, and Alice Bowen here now. He was your president yeah. for a number of years, and you were vice president. You must have some some fond memories, or maybe some uh, some trying memories of running the fair. No, we thought we thought we'd come to life because uh, we were involved for ten years. Ago, but, uh, I thought maybe you would have some input or some help <coughs> with your book and that. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. We do have uh, I don't know how many, but we do have some pictures at home. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. The, yes, the pictures you can, you do reproductions, you reproduce the pictures, so you still keep the original. Yeah, you don't have to use the ones with my, my eyes in. <laughs> <laughs> one or two, anyway. They might be the best ones, Doc. <laughs> so anyway, that's the reason why we bought it tonight. 
the property here? Oh, that would be very, very welcome. Absolutely welcome. Certainly. And uh, the number of years Don and Alice were with the Fairborn, and how, gosh, that's a lot of years that you were both very involved with the fair. 15 or 20 years? Well, we were involved with the fair before we ever came here. Uh, we used to take them to shoot and get back to the uh, marvelous fair down there, you know, we showed the captain. Yes. Continue that, yes. And you were president for 10 or 11 years. And Alice, you were treasurer for as long or more. And I ran the car And she ran the car demolition, I remember, and the advertising. Did you drive too? <laughs> My son drove in a couple of them. And, uh, I, and I, I got so interested in I bought a car myself and said, you know, here. This car in the demolition derby, and I gave it to Don Kaz's daughter, <laughs> and uh, they lined them up. And, uh, and of course, uh, Ralph Preston's daughter was lined up with her, and the two of them just floored it and slapped the two guys together, and they never moved after that. The whole thing. Oh, <laughs> no. They killed both of them one by In one shot. So they took them both over to Preston. Yeah. They ended up with both the way. <laughs> well, getting a car ready takes just as much of work like they're getting a horse or a cow or, or a sheep or a goat ready. <laughs> There's been uh, pretty much every kind of every kind of farm machinery and anything you see in the farm. There's been something for it uh, that makes us fair. And it's a member also of the Ontario Agricultural Societies, so we we always have. Um, District conventions are involved with that as well. So there's always something going on. Uh, you see the fair once a year, but you know how much goes into uh, into uh, bringing it to the village every year. Any other stories? Any other questions? Yes. One, one thing I remember is I'm my daughter was chair of the school and she knew nothing about it. He helped her out, and then when she showed her street marine, Lincoln locked the chicken out of the whole lot of years Communication crossfire. <laughs> There's always something, every year something hilarious happens at the show. Uh, well, we've had people meet, meet at the fair and, and later get married. We've had that happen. And we've had... Uh, People that probably hate each other after the fair. <laughs> but it's, it's a community effort, it really is. And uh, we encourage anyone who's interested in, in volunteering, we can always use help with volunteers. It's all kinds of, of things to do right before the fair, during, and right after. Even if it's you know selling, selling some, some homemade pie to somebody. Do you have any anything else you'd like to tell us? Mm -hmm. Well done. Mm -hmm. Well done. <laughs> well, we'd like to thank Lincoln for coming and providing this opportunity to uh, share his experiences about Lakefield Fair. Thank you so much, Lincoln. to our group plus we are videotaping the interview and depending on how the, the tape turns out there, we would hope to tape it later copy it later but our secretary extraordinaire um, uses her time and uh, does a transcript of the entire conversations 
So uh, that will be something that you and your family can have. That's another thing that we do as a historical society. Um, we try to use our volunteer hours, and so we've got, we, we purchase tapes to videotape an interview, and then we make a copy so they would be available to the public, like a library. Um, we, we learn a lot. If it, if it doesn't turn out very well, then we may not share it too much, but then uh, Sheila has graciously taken time and done transcripts for us. So these come along with time, and, and uh, we would like to have make sure that you have that too. So thank you so much. Uh, I remember as a little girl the days of the Lakeville Fair, and even for the parade when my father, Bob McCracken, had Leonard's Hardware, I was so excited that I could be in the parade and, and then go and see all the animals. I made sure that my children got to experience that, and I'm still so pleased that friends that I have in Toronto phone every year and say, when is that Lakefield Fair? Because people in cities need to experience that, and we need to keep that fair going. And it is such a delight to see that people still want to come to Lakefield to experience that. And happy 150th birthday to the Lakefield Fair and all that you did to help make it a success. And you too, Lynn, you've worked hard, both of you. So we'll be there, bells ringing. I, I'd like everybody to stay and have, they're not homemade, there, there's cookies and, and there's refreshments. So please, it's, it's our last meeting of the year, and uh, look at the photos, look at the book, and look at the lovely picture that's for a rattle. Thank you so much for coming, and we'll see you later.